We're looking down on the main floor of the house. This is the street level, and you can see the street on the far right. We're going to be putting a lid on this that will also serve as the floor for the top story. This process begins with putting steel beams in place, and that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. The first step is to cut a supply of these steel plaques. There will be one of these positioned everywhere on the top of the walls where a steel beam needs to rest on the wall. The plaques are welded to the rebar that is protruding out of the top of the walls that was left there specifically for that purpose. These beams need to be moved from the street level up to the second floor level of the house. They have two essential tools for accomplishing this. Uh, one of them is this tripod, and this enables them to lift the beams from the ground on a balance point and swivel them into position. In this case, they'll be lifting them and placing them on the far end into the bathroom window. And then they'll continue to raise it from there using the other tool that is essential to this process, which is a steel post with rebar rungs attached to it that allows it to be climbed. And they hang the block and tackle device from the top of it. They can use that to lift one end of the beam up onto the wall. They also use it to move the beam forward once it's up there by creating a triangle with the chain and the beam and the post. And as they tighten the chain, it pulls the beam forward, often requiring a little help from the bottom. They continue to scoot that beam forward using that technique until the beam reaches its balance point on the wall and it can be tipped down into place on top of the walls. Working on the next beam here, they ran into a problem in the street where the neighbors had left their cars in an unfortunate position, and they need to get the tail end of that beam up over the top of the car and back down onto the pavement in front of it, hopefully without coming into contact with the car. But as is pretty normal with these guys, no one seemed too concerned about it, and they pulled it off okay. They placed the first beam at an angle across the corner of the house, and that allows them to use it to roll the next beam on top of it using the steel pipes. And they'll just roll that out all the way across that gap and drop it down on the supporting column on the other side. They don't have the option of using that technique to get the first beam in place on the back side of the house. So they pull it up onto the tops of the walls, and then they'll scoot it across as far as they can without losing the balance. And then they'll have to use the pull ladder tool to finalize getting it into place. So they're setting that up now. This is a bit different than the first application of this tool that you saw where they were leaning it against a wall, basically, to use it like a standard ladder. In this case, it'll be positioned in the middle of the room, and they'll tie it off in four directions with the ropes to keep it in place while they use it to move the beam. So once they reach the other side, that beam gets placed on the plaque that was installed earlier. And in this case, the, this beam has had its flanges cut away so that it can be inserted into the rebar structure. There's a lot of measuring that goes on with this process, and when they were finished, the accuracy of the beam placement was within a millimeter. So he gets that exactly where he wants it and then tacks it down. and the more complete welding process takes place at the end after they've got all the beams in place. Now that they have the two outside beams positioned and tacked down, they'll move two more beams into place that'll be perpendicular to those that will define the hanging patio and the walkway.
So they'll use the beams that are already positioned to slide these the full width of the house and get them out to the end where they need to be attached. So then Lalo gives them some specific instructions on how to proceed. So now they'll take that beam that they just shoved into place that's behind the worker's back and using that pole ladder, they're going to lower that down and hold it while they tack weld it into position. So once that outside beam is in place, they move the pole ladder over to the center and lift up the other beam so it frees up the other longitudinal beam that he's currently standing on. Then, once they set that beam that's dangling in the background there from the pole ladder, then they'll be able to take this beam that they're rolling over toward the edge and connect it so that it runs parallel to the other outside beam and creates the support for the, for the meter-wide sidewalk that runs down the edge of the house and for the hanging patio in the back. That was kind of a crappy explanation, but you'll see here in just a couple seconds how this all is going to work. So they get this longitudinal beam moved out of the way, and then they will drop that beam that's hanging in the background, uh, drop it down and attach it so it's parallel to the outside beam. That will set on top of the three support columns that are clearly visible in the background. And when that's completed, then they, re they attach the longitudinal beam to the newly positioned outside beam, and now we have the definition of the pathway that goes around both sides of the house. Now they just need to put in the other three longitudinal beams that run parallel. So the three beams that they're about to install will all have the flange cut away like this one so that it can fit inside the flanges of the support beam. That beam fits into the one it's setting on and then it gets leveled and tacked into place. Oh, and this guy's got a long week ahead of him, getting every surface of every beam painted. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at the steel construction for the garage. Hope to see you there.